people ask me how they get involved in art, I always tell the story that I have a speech impediment. So when I would, whenever I would come home, tell my mom I had a bad day, kids teasing me about stuttering, she would say, go make mom a picture. <laughs> so I made mom a lot of pictures. So I didn't know that this would become a occupation of mine. Well, my name is Kevin Cole. I'm from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. I did my undergraduate degree at University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. I have a master's in art education from the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, Master of Fine Arts in Drawing from Northern Illinois University, uh, just outside of Chicago. I moved to Atlanta in 1985. I've been there since then. I taught middle school high school and college. So now I'm just a practicing artist in my studio. And um, my, I have five sisters and one brother. Um, my mom, she was the cafeteria manager. And my dad, he worked for um, a funeral home and he was in charge of grave setup and things of that nature. So when I got ready to, uh, well, when I turned 18 years old, my grandfather was always on me about going to vote. So every Saturday I would go to, to take care of him and take him in, in the town to buy different things. And this one particular day, we were standing outside and he said, have you registered to vote yet? I'm like, why should I? It's not gonna, not gonna make a difference. So he was 91 years old and he kneeled down with his cane and told me to go to this certain area, which was close to his home and said, J -j just go, just go and just go over there, you know, hang around over there for a bit. So came back, I said, you know, I had a, I had a real sc scary feeling. That's when he told me that African Americans were niche, but had neckties on their way to vote. And if you notice, uh, a lot of elderly people, they dress up to go to vote because it was a big honor. He talked about how they would take the, the necktie and wrap it around the rope and they would hang people in order to scare them about going and vote. And a little bit later, there was a book came out called Without Sanctions, talked about the lynching that took place in Star City, Arkansas, close to his home. And um, a lot of the research I've been doing at the, the, the Legacy Music Museum in, in Montgomery also had markers indicating that there were people lynched Star City, Arkansas, and Terry, Arkansas, where he, uh, where, where he lived. This one, entitled Fate Over Fears. Underneath this one, a county in Mississippi, a LaFleur County, um, Washington County, and Carroll County is it, it, underneath there with the neckties going back and forth. But in Emmett Till, was uh, lynched in Money, which is a small city in Alabama. And um, I asked several people about uh, uh, who lived at that time, how did they make it through, and they said their faith. So I came up with the title, Faith Over Fears. There's a part one, there's a part two, and I did a part three, which is not, though it's not in the show. Did you always imagine that you'd be a successful artist? <laughs> I wanted to be a welder and a bricklayer. I could make enough money in the summertime would last me all winter. So when I graduated, I had, um, from, from high school, I had a number of scholarship offers. But the one from University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff really struck me because there were four men there that changed my life. John Howard, Ernest Davidson, Terrence Corbin and Henry Linton. And later on, Ted, Ted Johnson came. But they were they were just they were just magnificent guys, you know. They they uh, helped mold me and shake me. I always tell the story that uh when they was telling me about going get a master's degree, I, I raised my hand, I said, Well, I don't play golf. Because <laughs> I had never heard of a master's degree in, the, you know, in, 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 in education. And they, they started laughing. So 
they were the ones that helped shape, shape my life and really uh, got me on the path of being an artist and an educator. These images of Arkansas were a part of, um, which you want a, a part of, uh, of the Dirty South series that I just concentrated on Arkansas. I took dirt from the Delta, which is Pine Bluff, and I put it a part of an Antelio print. So I took dirt from three parts of Arkansas, the, the, the Delta, then I took dirt from, uh, from Little Rock, then dirt from Northwest Arkansas, Fayetteville. The pieces are entitled uh, Unforeseen Challenges. These were things that we, we didn't know was going to happen. And um, that was a part of things I, when I kept reading about Arkansas and reading about the Elaine riots that took place in Phillips County. And I did a piece um, called When My Scars Are My Testimony, a very large piece, which talked about the Elaine riots that took place in, in Phillips County. In 1919, a group of black farmers got into altercation with a group of white farmers. Several of the white farmers, were, they were killed. And there was a lynch mob that lynched over 300 black people, uh, women and children. And that was a, tr a trial to determine if these black men, they were guilty. And the, the lawyer, his name is Scipio is Jones, which is a, uh, he lived here in Little Rock, and there's a high school named after him. He defended the uh, the, the men that were on trial. And there was one man, his name was Alfonso Af Banks. They asked him about his testimony. He said, my scars are my t testimony. And that's when I came up with the title, when when my scars are my, t my testimony. Mm -hmm. We just took some, took some, uh, uh, like some images of him. Yeah. And, and I was going to ask her if you didn't mind if I use them in my lectures. I got lectures planned around the country about this. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mom and Daddy would be blessed to have you remember that they the paid, the, paid their poll taxes yeah. and uh, did what they had to pay the poll taxes. Right. And that you didn't forget what it meant. No, no. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt your interview. Folks want to sweep that under the rug. Right, right. It's real. It's, 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 it's definitely real. And, it's, and, it's, and it's, it never left. No, and then, it, and then it's coming back. Yeah. So that's why I was telling someone earlier, that like, you know, why did you do the show? I had to. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the work led me there, especially in 2016. When it happened, it's like, you know, you, I started this series, I started looking at it and started to research. The more I did research, I'm like, this is not right. Yeah. Now we hit it yeah. back. Yeah. You know. And uh, I'm glad that this her. Which he had the vision. <laughs> yeah. He said, you gonna make it a gallery show? I said, yes. I mean, you know, she, she, you know, she is kind of a driver, you know. <laughs> He said these work well fit, didn't they? Didn't yeah, they I did that. So I, I didn't think they fit. Hey, she no. has a vision. <laughs> yes, and that, she does have a vision. And see, this gallery is designed for this kind of work. It is. Yeah. And, and then they have all the educational things yeah. here. Yeah. You know, that's the, that's the impressive part. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and when you hear that black folks don't read, <laughs> They say we didn't read, they say we didn't think, they say right. we couldn't swim. Right. And say we're crazy, we're trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't think about that <laughs> Okay. Yeah. They came up with the doggone disease, yeah. drapomania. Yeah. Because we kept trying to run away. Yeah. That's true. You know, WTF. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I got involved with her and Friday night back in the 90s. Uh, they had a show. In, in, in New York called the National Black Fine Art Show, where all the black galleries would, where they would bring their artists to exhibit. And I was in Atlanta and I knew of her and we talked and uh, she's been representing me ever since. 
What I enjoy about uh, Gabo Hearns and Archie Hearns is their knowledge and their involvement in the African-American culture. Reading and having a bookstore along with a gallery, but then pushing the culture of African-American artists. And it's like being a, in a, a family. You know, she's helped um, build my career as an artist. And when you sell them an artist, stay with a gallery that long. It's, uh, it's overwhelming and it's just joyful to be able to bring it back, share with the, 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 the people of Arkansas, as well as share with my community in terms of um, um, people I grew up with doing my undergrad at Arkansas Five Bluff, and to see my professor, Henry Linton, to come out and share the occasion with me, which he taught me a lot. I mean, if it weren't for those guys, I don't know where I would be because they were the ones that helped mold me into becoming an artist who, who insists that this is what you should be doing. I, I wanted to most of all to inspire people to vote. That's the only thing, vote. If I don't inspire anything else, inspire them to register to vote because people died that you could have that right. It wouldn't be, and I tell students, if they, if it wasn't so important, why don't they want you to do it? You know, right now, the John Lewis voting right have not been passed. So, you know, that's, I mean, if you look at the 14th Amendment, and, you know, there's several issues that we should be concerned about, not just for me, but for about concerned about my grandkids and my great-grandkids and others, you know, having not going back. That's why I named, named one of the ballot boxes Black to the Future instead of back Black to the Future because we determine a lot when we go and vote.